Hello lovelies, welcome back. So this time we are gonna talk about how to make this brioche and cowl. Yay! <laughs> okay, so this is a brioche cowl, so it's two colors and very squashy ribbing, and it is reversible. I, I didn't sew in my ends. So, but it is reversible. So here's the inside, and this is the outside. So that's kind of cool. Um, what I want to go over in this video is I want to start with the pattern itself. Um, this cowl does have, it's obviously it's more than just plain brioche ribs. We do have increases and decreases, which create this really cool flat cable effect. Um, so let's take a look at the pattern. Move this stuff out of the way. Okay, so then here we go. So here is the brioche and cowl, and well, the cowl pattern that is. So then on the front, we've got a materials list and gauge, although let's be honest, for a cowl gauge really isn't important as long as you can get it over your head. So, and then turning the page, um, I have a chart and I also have line by line instructions. Uh, I always prefer to look at charts. And I know a lot of people have trouble with them, so I kind of want to go over how to read this chart and color code it to make it easier for you. Uh, on the side here is our legend, and to help decipher what the symbols on the chart all mean. So since we're knitting in the round, uh, all of our rows are going to start on the right hand side of the chart. Now we've got main color rows and then contrast color rows because essentially in brioche knitting whether you're knitting it flat or in the round uh, each row or round gets knitted twice once with one color once with the other so on this chart the white the light colored rows that is your main color row and then the gray is the contrast color row so for my cowl the blue is the contrast color so here so the blue is the contrast color, and then the orange is the main color. So, I mean, you would cast on 96 stitches and then do knit one, purl one for three rounds, and then do your setup round. Um, and the setup round is, instructions are written out at the top of the chart, and then you have setup round two, and then following this. So on our chart, the symbols are, so we have dark gray areas, which there's no stitch because the stitch count will fluctuate for a few rounds. So you see there's patches where there are fewer stitches in one part than in other rounds. And then we've got this thing that looks like two legs. So this is your slip one yarn over. We have an upside down U. This is your brioche knit. We have this funky crossy over thing. This is your right leaning decrease. This is the same symbol, but in reverse. This is your left leaning decrease. And then we have this thing that looks like a cat face, I think. I don't know, I think it looks like a cat face. And this is your increase. And then we have the upside down you with the dot. This is your brioche pearl. And then a plain dot is a pearl. And these are all the stitches that you will find in this chart. Notice, most of the stitches in the chart are uh, barks, which is your brioche knit, burps, the brioche pearl, and the slip one yarn over. That's most of the stitches in the chart. So I want my special stitches to really stand out. So starting with our right leaning decrease, so I've got this yellow orange color pencil in my hand. So that's the color I'm going to make my right leaning decrease. So all of that stitch is going to be the same color on my chart wherever it shows up. I just chose one of the chart blocks to start coloring. But you see how, boop, 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 look, all of a sudden you can see it. Like you can really see it and it stands out and makes a difference and immediately makes this chart that much easier to look at and read. So your brain can process what it is you're supposed to do. Okay, so we've got all of our right leaning decreases are now this golden orangey color. So then I've got left leaning decreases. So I'll make those aqua. So wherever those show up. And 
these are the nice colored pencils. So now I know wherever I see blue, that's where those decreases are gonna be on my chart. Look, so now you can say, oh, this is where the decreases go. And it does make those stitches stand out. Um, I really like knitting charts. I like crochet charts too. And I, I'm very visual. Um, and I love the charts because they really are the picture of what it is you're going to make, which is great. Okay. And so then I've got my increases and that's this crazy cat thing. So, and this is, um, wide because what happens is when you're doing this barky old bark, um, you start out with one stitch and you end up with three. Um, or I guess you start off with two stitches and end up with three, but it takes place over three stitches because you're like knitting, you're doing a knit yarn over knit in one stitch. So yeah, so one stitch becomes three. So we'll just color this wherever we see it on here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And see, look, now you can see where it goes. It kind of makes sense. So this, see I've got these blocks with the blue lines around. Um, it's because on this side, these are the big fat cable that you saw. And then on this side is the long skinny cables. So in each section, it's like 16 stitches across. So if you wanted to make your cowl bigger than mine, um, you would cast on extra multiples of 32 stitches to make it longer. Sorry, I'm left-handed. I gotta tilt my paper, make it a little easier. Okay. But look how it just pops. Like it really, really pops. So sometimes on the increase, so this is an increase you are adding two stitches. This one is taking stitches away. Sometimes these add up and so like you get the same number of stitches every time, but sometimes not. And this is why you've got this gray business over here where there are no stitches. And don't worry, you won't be like, oh my God, where my stitches go? It just kind of happens naturally. And the nice thing is, is that um, I put stitch markers between, like every 16 stitches to keep the sections separate, which also helps me while I'm knitting. So that means less counting for me and hopefully less counting for you too. But um, I mean like the, as the pattern goes, even though the stitch count in this 16 stitch section changes, your stitch markers can stay in the same place and it won't flub you up and you won't be, you know, getting all sweary at your knitting. So I know this is like a little time consuming. You're like, let's just get to it, let's just knit. But I assure you taking these few extra moments to um, make your chart a little easier to look at will definitely help you in the long run. I'm trying to think there's anything else while we're looking at this. I mean, most of it's pretty simple. And if you are doing this pattern, I do hope that you have taken a look at our plain brioche knitting video, or you've taken my class, Bonkers for Brioche. Um, we are now offering classes in person, um, but you should have a basic grasp of brioche knitting before doing this. It will help. Um, if you haven't, probably you could still make this, but I am not gonna go over how to do basic brioche. I do wanna show you the special stitches so you can follow your chart and finish this piece on your own. Okay. And likewise, you know, and since you would cast on more stitches to make this cowl wider, like longer this way, if you wanted to make it taller, you would just do more pattern repeats. Um, but this is exactly how many pattern repeats I did on mine to make mine look how it does. Okay, so then now we're going to get knitting. So I cast on my 96 stitches with my contrast color yarn. And I already did my three rounds of knit one, purl one ribs. And I placed 
I've got my marker here. I'm at the beginning of my round, so I'm gonna do my setup round with my main color. Mine is this pretty sherberry color here. And like, look at that. Now you can see, oh, here's where these go. This is, here's where these cables will go or the faux cables will go. And it's just so much easier to see the pattern. Okay, so on our setup row, it says I'm gonna knit one, slip one yarn over all the way around. Okay, so I'm gonna just add my new yarn. I just slide it in here. Actually, what am I doing? I'm gonna insert my needle as if to knit, then I'm gonna put my yarn around, slide it in there. So now I knit one stitch, and then to slip one yarn over, bring the yarn to the front of my work, slip one, and then knit the following stitch. And when I slip with the yarn in front, it automatically creates the yarn over. Can you see that? Okay. So then we're gonna do this slip one, knit one, so slip one, knit one, all the way around. Slip one, and the yarn in the front creates the yarn over when we go to knit. Okay, so we'll see you back when we get to the end of our round. Okay, and we're back. And I've got the setup row, setup row number one complete, uh, or sorry, setup round number one is complete since we're going in the round and not across in rows. Okay, so I've got my slip one, knit ones. And if you're looking at yours and wondering if you made a mistake, what you're looking for is see this pair, this brioche pair, and then there's a plain one and a pair and then a plain and then a pair and then a plain. And it should be pair, plain, pair, plain, pair, plain, all the way around your circle. Okay, so now we're back to the beginning. And this is a yarn over because it was uh, knit one, slip one yarn over. So this is yarning over and it's staying in the back and it stays in the back. Uh, and the fun way to think of it is, well, you're going to knit with it, and when you're knitting, your working yarn is always in the back. So now I'm doing setup row number two. I need my contrast color yarn. In this case, it's this blue, and I'm going to move it to the front because I'm going to purl. Because when we purl, we need our yarn in the front. And for round number two, setup round two with a contrast color, we're going to slip one yarn over and burp. So we'll pull this down. So it says you're going to slip one yarn over and burp. And we're going to do this all the way around. And our yarn will be left hanging in the front because we are always going to be purling with our contrast color. So at the end of the round, it hangs in the front. So it's ready for us to begin the next time we're ready to use it. Okay, so we can slide this out of the way again. And okay, the slip one yarn over and when you're doing the, the pearl or the burp side is different from slip one yarn overs in between barks. I know burp bark, burp bark. A friend of mine hates those abbreviations, but I mean, it's brioche pearl brioche in it. And that, that's just kind of how it is. So lots of burping and barking when you're doing your brioche. So we're gonna slip one, notice our yarns in the front, bring the yarn up around to complete our yarn over. It's back in the front because now we're gonna burp. We're purling our brioche pair together. So slip one, see our yarns in the front, up around, back to the front, that's our yarn over. So that's our slip one yarn over pair. And now we're gonna burp. All right, so one more time, cause three is the charm. Yarns in the front, we're gonna slip, and then we're gonna make our yarn over, and we're gonna burp. Okay, so I'm gonna slip one yarn over and burp all the way back to the beginning, and I'll see you in just a moment. Got a mess of strings here. Okay, <laughs> back at the beginning. Um, if you recall, we left our main color draped over our last stitch at the end of our round. So now I'm getting to it. So I did my burp. So then I've got my slip one yarn over bring my yarn back to the front and I'm going to burp the last stitch. And it's like that, see? And then my blue yarn is in the front. 
The orange is still in the back. All right, so then now I'm gonna slide my stitch marker over and we're getting ready now to do row number 1A from our chart. So row number 1A is done with our orange yarn and the first thing we have is the orange symbol or the orange symbol, oh my gosh. We have the magenta purple symbol here. Whoo, oh man, okay. And the magenta symbol is our Bark Yo Bark, which is a brioche knit yarn over brioche knit in one stitch. Um, in brioche knitting, decreases and increases are usually done only on the brioche knitted stitch on the right or on the main side of your fabric, on the right side of your fabric, the side that's got your main color, with the main color on the right side of your fabric. There we go. So to bark your bark, insert and I'm gonna bark, but I'm gonna leave my yarn on stitch on the needle and I'm gonna do a yarn over and I'm gonna insert my needle back into the stitch and I'm gonna knit again. And that's how I do my increases. Now you could have like five, it could be bark yo bark yo bark. You could go up to, you know, bark yo bark yo bark yo bark. You could have 10 stitches made out of here, but generally brioche increases are all the same maneuver. It's the same type of stitch. Um, the only thing that changes is how many times you add a yarn over in between the different knitted pieces, like how many extra stitches you're putting in here. We have added two because see now, instead of just one knitted stitch, there's now one and two, there's now three. So we're gonna take this off, yarn back to the front. This is our slip one, yarn over, and we are going to bark the next stitch. So according to my pattern, I've got one, two barks, and then I'm doing a left leaning decrease. So we're gonna make that happen. So that's bark number one. Slip one with my yarn over. This is bark number two. And then I'm going to slip one. And now my left leaning increase, I am going to slip my first stitch knit wise and then I'm going to brioche knit the next two stitches together. So that means the single stitch and this pair are getting knitted together as if they are one stitch. Okay, and then I am going to pass the slip stitch over. And when they say that, they mean the whole pair is getting passed over. See, so now the stitch leans to the left and the orange is on the outside. Okay, can you see that? All right, and now it says, I'm gonna have one, two, three barks and then I'm gonna put in a stitch marker. So we've got slip and then here's one. Slip one yarn over, this is two. Slip one yarn over. This is three. And then I'm gonna have a slip one yarn over. Let me get a handy dandy stitch marker. I have a ton of these. I got this case because the blue matches the blue and you know, everything has to match. <laughs> so, oh, this one's kind of big. We'll grab this yellow one. Okay, so that'll be my stitch marker. Now I'm on to just past the blue line on my chart and it's a plain bark and then a slip one yarn over and then I have my right leaning decrease. So it's nice, all the special stitches all on row 1A, sorry, round 1A. So we're gonna bark and then we've got our slip one yarn over and now for our right leaning decrease, we're gonna slip one stitch knit wide. And then we're going to knit the next stitch. So the stitch that's by itself, oh, here, I'll take that apart. This one that's by itself, we're going to knit this. Now we pass this stitch, so the slip stitch, which is this first brioche pair. We're gonna pass that over our knitted stitch. Now, here's the fun fiddly part. 
we're putting this new orange stitch back on our left hand needle. See it's on our right hand needle, so now we slide it back over to our left hand needle, and then we're gonna pass this brioche pair over it. And ta-da! Sort of like a fun stacking of the stitches, and this creates your right leaning decrease. You see? Okay, and now we're gonna pop this back over to the right needle, and we're going to slip one, bark one, um, all the way to the end of this 16 count. So that's one, two, three, four, five barks. Okay, and then we'll do another stitch marker. Okay, so we slip one, so this is bark one, Two, slip one, bark three, slip one, bark four, slip one, bark five. Sorry if this is painfully slow. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. And the last one here is a slip one yarn over. Then I'm gonna put another stitch marker to mark off my segment. Okay, so then this is my 32 stitches. We'll do one more segment together and then I'll meet you back for round 1B. Hold on, we'll do one more segment together because I wanna go over the special stitches one more time just so you're clear. Um, okay, so now we're going back. So we've gotten to here. So we go back to the beginning of the chart. So we're at the magenta doohickey again, okay. So if you recall, so that's our bark yo bark. So we insert as if to knit, and we're gonna bark, yarn over, and bark. See, and then we have our little tree of three stitches. Bam, done. And then we're gonna have two plain barks in between. So this is one and two. And we've got our slip one yarn over. Now we're ready to do our left leaning decrease, which has like this BRL slid deck slip one. It's our left leaning decrease. <laughs> okay, so we're going to slip as if to knit, and then we're gonna knit the single stitch and the following brioche pair together. And then we're gonna pass our slip stitch over, which is again, an entire brioche pair, and that gives us our left leaning decrease. And then we are going to have three barks to the end of this section. That's one, two, three, slip, and stitch marker, and then we've got one bark, and we have a slip, and then now we're gonna do our right leaning decrease. Remember, this is the one where we pass it over, pass it over, pass it over. So we slip one as if to knit. Then we knit the single stitch. Then we're gonna take this brioche pair that we slipped, and we're gonna pass it over. Now we transfer the stitch back to our left needle. Then we take this brioche pair right behind it, and we're gonna pass it over the new orange stitch. Ta-da! And we transfer back to our right needle, and huzzah, a right leaning decrease. Okay, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five barks to the end of this section. So here we are again. This is one, and two, and three, four, and five. And then I'm gonna place my stitch marker. Come on, yellow. Okay, stitch marker. All right, so then then I'll see you back at the beginning and we'll go over row, or sorry, we'll go over round 1B. Okay. Okay, so end of my round and the last stitch is a slip one yarn over. So the main color goes over the needle to the back 
and just hangs out there because it's gonna get burped on the way back. <laughs> okay, so one B is done with the blue. So really, I mean, this is all still round one. So with the blue, um, what we're doing is, this is gonna be a burp, a slip. Yeah, burp, slip, burp, slip. So we're gonna slip the first one. So slip one yarn over, bring it around and we're gonna purl the middle. And then we're gonna slip one yarn over, bring the yarn back around to the front and we're gonna burp the following. So when we've got our three stitches there, you see the one in the middle is just a plain purl, which is why on our pattern down here, see on our pattern here, we've got the slip one yarn over and then a purl and then a slip one yarn over and then it's burp. And then it's just burp, slip, burp, slip, burp, slip all the way across, all the way around to the end. I did want to show what you do at the beginning. So here, I'll tink it. So I'll unknit it for you so you can see. Cause it is, it's weird. This is like the last weird thing on here. I swear. <laughs> okay. So my stitches look like this. And you go, what the heck do I do with that? You say, okay, so my pattern, got legs dot legs legs that slip one yarn over dot is a pearl slip one yarn over all right I got it so we're gonna start off our round so we've got our slip one yarn over and then we're gonna pearl that's the dot and then we're gonna slip one yarn over see back in front and then we're gonna burp Bam. So, and then now, so see what happens when we do the slip one yarn over, watch, slip one yarn over, it creates a shawl around the stitch that we slipped. See, so it's like it's the, my little orange stitch is wearing a scarf, because here it goes bloop all the way around, and that makes this row of orange Vs stick out so you can see them really well. That's what we call a shawled stitch. So, and we're going to slip one and burp all the way around back to the beginning. So with these few techniques, um, you could make this whole cowl. And you should, because it's a fun project. I think it goes really fast. And it's a great way to learn how to do directional decreases in your brioche knitting. It's a fun way to up your game. If you do need help or have questions, you can uh, call our shop. A number is found on our website, which is lovelyarns.com. And also you can email us at lovelyarns at gmail.com. Uh, I hope you have a lot of fun. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And happy knitting.